All right, so welcome to the Pabli training. Y'all, I'm so excited about this because Pabli is a Zapier alternative. And it's something that I found just recently. It hasn't been um, just real out there very long, but I am a huge Zapier fan. And what Zapier allows you to do is connect two platforms that normally don't connect together. Um, it allows you to connect them together so you can kind of trade information back and forth. And Pabli does basically the same thing. Because it's new, it's not gonna have near as many uh, functions and capabilities as Zapier does, but I think it's on its way. And the other cool thing that is happening in Pabli is that it is much less expensive to get started in Pabli. And then also the tasks that you do are done a little bit different in Pabli than Zapier. And I'll explain the difference between the two in just a little bit. But um, let me go ahead and share my screen, screen and get started. And we'll just start to go through the entire training and then I'll show you some really cool stuff. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna go over here to Canva and we'll go to the presentation. And let's see what trouble we can get into today. So there we go, perfect. All right, so what we're gonna talk about today is Builderall and Pabli together. So. What you guys are gonna see is some neat stuff that you can do inside of Builderall to either pull the information out and send it into somewhere else, like a Google spreadsheet or something like that, or to actually take information that is outside of Builderall and send it into Builderall to be able to update an email list or something like that. So we, we can either work to bring information out or work to bring information in. And Pabli helps us do that because it can connect things like Google Spreadsheets to Builderall, which normally they don't talk together. But if you put Pabli in between them, they can actually talk together and exchange data and exchange information. So that's kind of what we're doing today is we're learning how to connect Builderall to other platforms to transfer data into and out of Builderall. So that's the goal. <laughs> we're going to try real hard to get there. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just talk about uh, introductory information. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Pabli, about tasks, about triggers and actions. Um, and then I'm going to go through some examples like setting up Cheetah to send data into a Google spreadsheet or setting up Cheetah to go into Google and then to go into Mailing Boss or setting up Super Checkout to go to Google and then Mailing Boss. And then actually we can do something like a magic funnel and we can use Pabli to create a new Builderall member account in a roundabout way. So there's a lot of neat stuff that we can do and, uh, and hopefully we can get through all of it. Um, I may refer to some training videos as well because there's even more that you can do, but I didn't wanna keep you guys for like six hours. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna go through and do as much as we can. And then I'll refer to some training videos if we're not able to get to it all. So the first thing we have to talk about is how on earth does Pabli work? Uh, what makes it work to be able to take data and move it from one place to the other? And the answer is it uses a combination of triggers and actions. So a trigger is a specific thing that needs, needs to happen in order to trigger Pabli to start uh, either collecting data or do something special. So a trigger might be when we set up a form inside a Builderall and somebody fills out that form. If they fill out that form, we can set it up that that's a trigger that that data goes into Pabli. Okay, that's a trigger. What's another trigger? We can set it up so that if we have a Google spreadsheet and I add a new row to it, that's a trigger. Pabli can get that information and say, oh gosh, we have a new row. Let me collect the data. Okay, that's a trigger. Um, another trigger, uh, you made a new sale in Stripe. It can actually listen to Stripe and if you make a new sale in Stripe, it can be a trigger to collect that sale information into Pabli, okay? So let me look at your eyeballs to make sure you're understanding that. So a trigger is something that it's a, something that's happening that you've told Pabli, listen for this. If this happens, then I'm gonna tell you what to do, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. So once we have a trigger happen, then we have an action that we can tell it to do. So for example, if someone fills out a form, well, then I want to take that data and put it into a Google spreadsheet, okay? So let's go back to sharing real quick. So we've done a trigger and that 
activates an action. So once Pavli is triggered, then we tell it what it needs to do. So I fill out a form. I'm going to take that data and put it into a Google spreadsheet. I just made a sale in super checkout. That's the trigger. I'm going to take that data and I'm going to put it into a Google spreadsheet. Um, I just, oh gosh, created a, a, a new Google spreadsheet row. That's a trigger. I'm going to take that new information in that row and put it into mailing boss. Okay. So um, trigger and action. So those are the main things that you do with Pavli is you set up something that it's listening for, that's the trigger. And then once that trigger happens, then you tell the action that you want it to do. Now you can do one trigger and 52 actions. So for example, I can have an opt-in form that collects a name and an email. That's the trigger. The action can be send that information to mailing boss. So that's one action. Then I can do another action that says send that information to Google Spreadsheets. Then I can do another action that says create an account on this website so they can get information, they can get added to a new piece of software that I have, which is what I actually do, you guys. There's software that one of the actions is to take their email and put it into the software and create a new account for them. And then there's another action after that that says, all right, take the email that they put in and send them an email that gives them their login information for their new software they just got. Okay, so you can have multiple actions that happen after a trigger. You can also set it so that it's constantly listening for a trigger, or you can set it so that it only listens for a trigger after a certain amount of time. So maybe you wanna set up a, a trigger that's delayed so it only catches it maybe once every 24 hours, okay? So there's lots and lots of things we can do, you guys, uh, that we can do, set up triggers and we can set up actions. So this is a really, really cool thing that Pavli does to be able to start listening for data and then taking action on that data depending on what you tell it to do. All right, next slide. Oops, I think I went backwards. There we go. So the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about, and this is one of the most important things that happens inside is tasks. And inside of Pabli, a task is when it takes action to do something, okay? So inside of Pabli, when you are setting up your uh, workflows, you've got triggers and actions. Triggers are a free task. You'll never pay for a trigger. And there's also some uh, native internal apps that are considered free every time you use them as well. So if you do a trigger that says, uh, fill out an opt-in form and when they do capture that information, the act of capturing the information is free. You're not gonna pay for that task. Then there's an internal app that actually allows you to do uh, what's called parsing, where you can go through and look at the information and pull out if it's a .com or a .net or a .org, it's parsing. Parsing is a native app to Pabli, so that would be a task that would not be charged for. So you can see, and I'll show you when we go into Pabli, every single task that you create, it will tell you if it's free or it will tell you if it's charging. Now, let me take a look at your eyeballs a minute because this is important. If you set up a workflow and it's got a trigger, free, and it's got a native app, free, but then it's got action, 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 and all of those actions are items that cost one task, it's very real possibility that inside of that one workflow, you can have several tasks that you're being charged for. Now I've got the, um, the, the package that is the lifetime deal, that's 10,000 tasks per month. So I can do up to 10,000 tasks per month. Um, if you need more than that, you would have to upgrade to a, a higher plat, uh, program or plan. Um, so just make sure you're paying attention to what the tasks are and, uh, and understanding what a task is and how you can be charged for them. And we'll actually go through when we do some examples, you'll see those tasks in action and it will show you um, in your workflow how many tasks that are free and how many tasks that you're charged for. Okay, everybody understand the task part. Yeah? Okay, great. So now let's talk about some of the things that you can do inside of Pabli. So let me go here. So this first one, um, I can actually pull data out of Builderall through a contact form. So I can set up the contact form inside of Cheetah. 
And then I can just bypass Mailing Boss and actually send it straight to Google um, into a spreadsheet. Now, why would I do that? Um, why would I not want to put it into Mailing Boss? I don't know. Um, I may have a VA that can process that information and do something with it outside of Builderall. Um, I may have information that I'm collecting that is um, something that I have to send to someone else. Uh, maybe I'm collecting leads for somebody and I can send them their leads inside of a Google spreadsheet. And then they ne never have to actually get into my builder all account. Um, have you guys ever seen people that get leads for other people? Um, they obviously don't want you in their own account. So you can be collecting leads for people and sending them in a Google spreadsheet, um, uh, those leads. So does that make sense, you guys, that you can actually pull that data out of Builderall and send it to a Google spreadsheet and maybe some real world uses of it? Yeah. OK, so let's jump in and try that. Let's see if we can set that up. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into Pavly. And we're going to look around a little bit and see what Pavly actually looks like. So we go here and we'll go into Pavly. And this is Pavly right here, pavly.com. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sign in. And when I sign in, the first thing I see is that I've got all apps and then my account information. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five uh, apps here. And the one that I signed up for is Pavly Connect. That's the one that is very Zapier-like. They've got other apps that you can purchase, including subscription billing, don't need it because I've got Builderall, email marketing, don't need it because I've got Builderall. A form builder, I don't need it because I've got Builderall. Email verification, I don't need it because I actually have Inbox, which is sold by Builderall. So the only thing I really needed was Pavly Connect. So I'm gonna go ahead and access that now. And that takes me into Pavly Connect so I can start working with workflows. So you can, if I scroll down, you'll see that I've got several that I've been playing with. And, uh, and you can see that I've got 11 whole tasks that have been consumed so far and 20 that have been consumed that are free tasks. So let's go ahead and talk about workflows. So when I'm building a new, um, a new set of rules that I wanna set up, I'm gonna be working inside of workflows inside of Pavly. Very similar to what you've got inside of Mailing Boss and Builderall, it's a workflow and you kind of do a visual representation of the flow of information that's happening in Mailing Boss. And it's kind of the same thing that happens in workflow. But before we jump into there and actually build our first workflow, I wanna show you some ways that you can test and see what's gonna happen inside of Pavly. So right here, I've got something called testing different features. So it's just, it's not anything that works. It's not anything that I've actually got connected to anything. It's just a way for me to take a look at what are the capabilities of Pavly and what can I connect to. So I'm gonna click inside of there to just take a look and see what I've got. So the first item is always the trigger. Remember the trigger is the thing that Pavly is listening for so it knows when to start the workflow. The trigger is what starts the workflow. So right here's the trigger. And then the next item is the action. And I can have multiple actions. So I can do another one and I can do another one. I can do as many as I want after that trigger. So as soon as you do a trigger and you get information, um, then the next step is to tell Pabli what you want Pabli to do with that information. So let's look at the triggers first and see what kind of triggers we can do. So here's a, a, a kind of a list of some of the mo more popular things that you can use as a trigger. So we've got the native apps. So that's webhook, email parser, uh, schedule. So you can schedule a workflow to happen. Um, you can watch what's happening with the Google uh, spreadsheet. Uh, you can even connect to Facebook leads and actually trigger that when you get a new lead in Facebook through a, a Facebook lead form, um, it will trigger to collect that information and then you can do something with that information. Um, Google Forms. So if somebody fills out a Google form, that will trigger Pavly to collect that information and then you can do an action with it. So let's take a look at Google Sheets to see what it can do. So I'm gonna click Google Sheets. And when I pull that into my trigger, then it says trigger event. So what I've told it so far is look at Google Sheets. And then I have to say, well, if you look at Google Sheets, this is one I want you to look for. And the only option I have for a trigger 
is, is there a new spreadsheet row? So think about this. If you've got a Google spreadsheet out there and you're adding data to it, um, maybe you're keeping track of your um, daily expenses or something like that. And so you fill it out a new row with a new expense that day. You can actually fill out the row and then Pabbly will read that you have a new row and collect the information that you put into that row. Okay, does that make sense? Let me, let me look at your eyeballs. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's a trigger, right? We're listening for something to happen. So technically inside of Pabbly, we can connect to Google Spreadsheets and listen for a new row. Okay, that's what that is doing. So let me jump back in and we'll look at a few more triggers. So um, let's say that I want to work in something else. I want to trigger something else. So I can go to, oh, this is a good one. Google My Business. Google My Business has a trigger. Now, every one of you guys need to listen carefully. This is a money-making opportunity right here. Okay, I'm not saying it really loud because I don't want anybody to steal it, but you guys, this is a money-making opportunity right here. So um, let me go back and share my screen. So we can trigger it in Google My Business that if someone creates a new review, we collect that data. If someone creates a new post in Google My Business, we can collect that data. Um, if we have a new review for a multi-location um, business, we can collect that data in any of those locations. So here's what we're saying is, all right, Pabli, on Google My Business, if I get a new review, I want you to collect that data, okay? So let's talk about why that's an awesome thing and why it's its own business. Because imagine if you're doing this for a company, okay? So let's say a pizza place and they get a new review. You can actually go to them and say, I will monitor all of your reviews. And when you get a new review, if it's below a, a four, we'll private message them and give them a coupon inside of an email that says, we're sorry that your experience wasn't a five. Here's the coupon, please join us again and try us again, right? You can set all that up and automate it. Then if it's a five, you can set it up so that a rule sees that it's a five and you can say, wow, thank you so much for your review. Here's the coupon for the next time you come in for in, in appreciation of taking the time to, to give us a great review. So do you guys see how this is a business opportunity? Yeah, and it all starts with just setting it up so it's listening to Google My Business and listening for people adding a review to that business. Cool beans, right? <laughs> okay, so that's a cool one. Um, let's go in and see what else we can do. So Google My Business, um, let's see what else. We've got Zoom. Y'all, Zoom is so cool. Um, if you set up Zoom as a trigger, Let's see what the event has to be. So we configure webhooks and webhooks is a way to capture data. And if you set up the webhooks according to the um, instructions that they give you, you can set it up so it collects data on a person if they join a meeting, it collects data if they leave the meeting, it collects data if they, um, if they asked to, if, if they did a chat. There's all kinds of items here in the configure webhooks area where once you configure that webhook, it will capture data during the Zoom session and actually um, put that data wherever you want to. It's got to capture it first, so that's the trigger. So you can even set a trigger for Zoom, which is crazy, right? Let's do one more trigger before I jump into something. Um, we build something together. So let's see, oh my gosh, there's so many. I've had so much fun going through these and there's just no way that I will be able to um, teach you all of them. So let's say, well, let's, let's talk about uh, ClickUp. ClickUp right here. ClickUp is a um, project management software that we use internally for BuilderAll to manage your products, assign tasks, confirm that the tasks were finished, all that kind of stuff. So we can actually use ClickUp as a trigger and what happens inside of ClickUp is, is there a new folder? If there is, collect that data. If there is a new task, collect that data. If it's a new list created, collect that data. 
Um, and then a uh, new goal created, collect that data. Has a task been updated? Collect that data. So you can imagine if you are running a ClickUp and anything gets updated, you can actually collect that data and then do whatever you want to with that data. It's collected. So now you can send it to a Google spreadsheet or what I've done is actually set it up that when a new task is created to send it straight to MS Teams so our developers can see that task right away. So let me tell you uh, exactly what that is. Um, we're doing beta testing inside of our team, inside of our staff. And when they find an issue, they can go to ClickUp where they're normally every day, they work in ClickUp, they can report it as a task. And that task actually is captured by Pabli. And then it's sent to MS Teams straight into the developer group, into the developer channel. So it's, you know, we don't have to do it manually. It do, goes right in there. And they don't have to have an account inside of MS Teams. We can keep them inside of ClickUp the whole time, but their information gets to the developer because we've got Pavly to connect it. Okay. Are you starting to see the power of this now? Oh yeah, it's really, really cool. So let's, let's do some real basic stuff first. And the first thing I'm gonna teach you is something called webhooks. And webhooks is a way to hook data and bring it out. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do in our first thing that we're gonna work together is we're gonna hook some data and bring it out and then send it to a Google spreadsheet. So let's go back to share our screen and uh, I will go, oh my gosh, everything's kind of blocking here. Let me see. Dun, dun, dun. Let me go back to click to uh, Canva, maybe, maybe, maybe there it is. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go from Cheetah to a Google spreadsheet, happily in the middle, cause it's gonna capture that data. And we're just gonna use a plain old contact form. That's all we're gonna do is a plain old contact form. So it sounds like super hard, but it's actually not even hard. So let's go ahead and go into Pabli first. And we'll do just a basic workflow. So I'll go back into the dashboard so you can see me at the very beginning. And then I'm just going to go to create workflow. Boom. So what am I going to call this? I'm going to call it um, Cheetah to Google. And then I'm going to put um, test so that I know that this is one that we did in a class. And then create. So now I've got my workflow created and guess what it asks me first? It says, okay, what's your, what's your trigger? What are you listening for? What's gotta happen for this to be able to work? So in order to make this work, I have to use something called webhooks. And webhooks is like having a really big ear on the internet listening for data. That's what it's doing, it's listening for data. So I'm just gonna click webhooks right here. And when I click webhooks, it gives me a webhook URL. That URL is where I'm gonna send the data. And it's gonna be listening at that URL all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's gonna be listening at that URL to see if there's any data that's sent to it, okay? So the next thing we have to do is actually create a form, a contact form that sends data to that URL. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into Builder All and I'm going to go into Cheetah Website Builder. And let's go ahead and create a, a website that's got a form like that. Okay. So I'm going to do create new website and we're just going to do it a blank page. I'd love to make it beautiful, you guys, but um, I want you to see like every single little bitty thing I'm doing. So I'm just going to do a blank one and select and save. So now we've got a blank website, not a thing in here. And I'm going to go ahead and edit the home page. And I'm just going to put a contact form. That's all I'm going to do is a contact form. So we'll get rid of all the other stuff that's on there. I'll go here and I'm going to go to add an element. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to do contact form. And we'll just do the basic contact form right there. And now what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to decide what what information do I want to collect. And let's say that I'm collecting a name and an email. That's pretty standard. So in this contact form, I'm just going to click set fields. And I'm going to go to the fields area and I'm going to keep the first name. I'll get rid of the last name. I don't need it. I'll keep the email and I don't need the phone number. So that's good enough for me. And then on the first name field, I'm going to edit that and I'm just going to put the label as name. Okay, super easy. Um, is it required? Yes. And save. So both of those, let me make sure that the email is required. Yes. And save. So absolutely fabulous. That's an easy one, right? Just a two field uh, opt in form. So I'm going to click save. And what it, what it says then is I have to do a receiver. So I have to go to this action and put something in that action area. <gasps> that action is the URL that we were just given by Pabli. Remember we went into Pabli and it said, okay, here's your trigger, here's a URL. So let me go back into to Pabli. I'm gonna get this URL and I'm gonna copy it. Then I'm gonna go back over to Cheetah and I'm going to paste it. And now what it's gonna do you guys is every time somebody fills out that form, and it, they put in a name and an email, it's going to send the data to this URL. Now I have a question for you. Is that information going into Mailing Boss? No, it's nowhere near Mailing Boss, is it? This is a standalone form that is not connected to Mailing Boss in any kind of way, shape, form, or fashion. So we're actually getting the name and the email, and we're sending it right out of BuilderAll. It's not, it's not hitting mailing boss at all. Okay, you got that? All right, just wanna make sure you understood that part. All right, so now I've got my action URL and I'm gonna click save. And now, believe it or not, that is actually ready to go. It's ready to collect information and it's ready to send it over to Pabli. All I have to do is save the page and publish. And just like that, boom shakalaka, we have a form and it's ready to collect data. So let's go ahead and actually collect some data. That's the next step we have to do to make sure it's working. So on this page, I'm just gonna do the triple dots and I'm gonna to go to the website page. And there's the form, it's ugly. I know it's ugly, but you know what? It has a purpose and that is to collect data. So I'm gonna go ahead and collect data. So I'm gonna say my name is Shelly, cause that's my name. And then I'm gonna go Shelly at builderalldiva.com and then get instant access. And what I've got here is it's a status message that says that it's sent successfully. No worries about that. We're gonna actually um, edit that in a few minutes to show you how you don't get that page to show. But let's take a look in Pabli to make sure that we got the data. So if you look right here, it says it's waiting on a webhook response. So what it's trying to do is it's trying to um, figure out, is it sending data because I need it, it needs to see an example of what kind of data that you're gonna send. So um, it is waiting. Let's see if we can get it to hurry. It's still waiting and still waiting. And still waiting. And still waiting. <laughs> and let me refresh. It's probably gonna mess up the URL. Oh, there it is. So, so what happens is once I test that form out, it's gonna actually send information. And if you'll take a look where it says response received, it actually got my information. So where it says first name, I got Shelly. For email, it got Shelly at builderalldiva.com. So every time we look at any other step in this workflow, we can pull this data and use it for anything because it now has the data inside of Pabli. Let me, um, let me say that again to make sure you know. That first step, that trigger, it has grabbed that data and put it into Pabli. So now everything I do, I can use that data and it uses it in the form of like tags. So I pull the first name field 
And then every time somebody fills that out, it will put their name inside of there for the first name. When they put in their email, it puts their email in for that field, okay? So I've got the holder spots, kind of the holder, the buckets, and that when those buckets are filled by actual data, it will add that data to Pavly. Does that make sense? Chip, go ahead. Would you have needed to use a webhook if among all the icons of the different apps it connects to, Builderall was one of those apps? One of those icons? Yeah, we, we actually have an app for that. It's a mailing boss app, and I'll show you that in a bit. Thank you. Yeah, we do have a mailing boss app inside of Pavly, but it specifically connects to mailing boss four, not five. So I'm going to show you the two ways, um, one way to connect to four and a second way to connect to five. Okay. All right. So now we've collected data. We've got data inside of Pavly. Um, and we took it out of Builderall and put it into Pavly. Now we have to say, okay, what are we going to do with that data? What on earth are we going to do with that data? So the next step I wanted to do was send it to a Google spreadsheet. Now, again, why would I want to do this? Well, I might have somebody that needs to see that information. So maybe it's their leads that I'm collecting for them, right? So instead of giving them access to mailing boss, setting it in the mailing boss and letting them get access, I can actually just pull it straight out of that form and send it to a Google spreadsheet, okay? And then they can process that information however they wanna process it. So let's do that next step, which is an action step where it takes the data from the trigger and takes action on that data, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And down here, we've got our first action step. So I'm gonna to click to open that up. And then I'm gonna scroll across until I find Google Sheets right there. So I'm gonna click that because that's the action I wanna take is inside of a Google spreadsheet. And the action I can do is I can add a new row. Now with this data, this is what, the, what actions I can take. With this data, I can add a new row. I can um, get a row which goes to a spreadsheet and retrieves information. I can look up something so I can say, if the person Shelly exists already, then tell me, right? So I can look up, I can search a spreadsheet for a specific thing, or I can even copy a specific row. So in this particular case, I wanna take the data and add a new row. That's exactly what I wanna do. So I'm gonna click that one. And I want you to notice that up here in this first action, it says free task. So when it does this, it collects the data on the trigger. It doesn't cost me a task. But when I send it to Google Spreadsheet, this is not a free task. So this is going to be one task that's going to cost me when it happens. So every time I get a person to sign up and it goes through this workflow and it adds that person to the Google Spreadsheet, it's worth one task. OK, everybody got that? All right. So now the next step is it has no idea what Google account I wanna connect it to. So that's the next thing I have to do is connect my Google account. So I'm gonna click connect. And then I can choose to add a new connection. So if you've never connected before, um, you can connect to a Google spreadsheet or you can choose an existing connection, which I've connected already to my Builderall Diva account. And, uh, and it's just an easy connection, you guys. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I'm gonna go Builderall. Diva um, number two, it's the same account. I'm gonna to connect to the same account. Make sure you name it so you know what account it is. So for me, this is a Google account that's builderalldiva at gmail.com. So when I see that, I know exactly which Gmail it's connecting to, okay? Um, then I click connect and it's gonna say, okay, what do you wanna to connect to? And here's all my lovely Gmail accounts. I have so many, you guys, it's ridiculous. But there's my Builder All Diva account. So I click on that. And then I give a permission and click continue. And it's successful. It gives me that message that I'm successful. And now it's actually connected to my Google account that's under Builder All Diva at gmail.com. Okay. Everybody got that so far? All right. Now what I have to do is go into my Gmail account and create a sheet because I don't have a sheet yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go into Google. And I'll go into my Google account that is the builderalldiva at gmail.com. 
And then I'm just gonna go into um, Sheets. So I'm gonna go to Docs, that's where my sheets are. And I'm gonna create a new sheet. There we go, here's my sheets. And I'm gonna create a new sheet. So all I do is hit the plus sign. And then here inside the sheet, I'm gonna put name and email because those are the two things that I'm collecting is name and email. Okay, everybody with me so far? All right, so once I've created those columns, I have to make sure that it was saved. That's really important that all the information is saved. So those two fields are saved and I get to go back to Pabli and um, I need to refresh because it's gonna be a brand new sheet and it doesn't have that brand new sheet. So all I have to do is hit refresh right here and it will connect to that account and get me a new list of what sheets I have. So let me refresh. It's gonna think a minute. There we go. And uh, so now let's see if that spreadsheet's in there. So it's an untitled spreadsheet. Let's go ahead and title it. So um, test uh, cheetah to Google Perfect. So now we've named it and, uh, and this, the changes have been saved. So now let's see if I can refresh it again and let's see if it gets the new name. So give it a second and boom, there's that new name. Okay, so there's the worksheet. So it's now connecting to the, to, the, to the sheet, but inside of Sheets, when you work with Google Spreadsheets, there's usually one tab and you can have multiple tabs across the sheet. So you can actually have several uh, workbooks, or sorry, several sheets inside of the workbook. That's kind of how Excel uh, says it. So this one only has one. So if I go back to Pabli, when it says select the sheet, there's only one of them. So I'm gonna select that one. But just so you know, if that workbook has several sheets, you can actually pick the specific sheet that you want to add the data to, okay? And then, then it says uh, name and email. Isn't that weird? That's the, the information that we want to collect in that sheet. And what it did was when I chose that sheet, when I chose that Google spreadsheet, it went in and said, okay, do we have names of the columns? And it found that there's a name column and there's an email column. Okay, so let me look at your faces. Um, it went to the Google spreadsheet and it said, okay, do we have the names on the top of the columns? And it found one column with name at the top and another column that had email at the top. Okay, those are the labels for those columns. But Pabli doesn't know which field goes with which field that we collected from the opt-in form, right? It doesn't know. It's not smart enough to know that if we name something F name and we name something name, that they're the same field. So we have to do something called mapping. So we have to identify in the Google spreadsheet under name, what field from the trigger do we want to go in the name column? What field from the trigger do we want to go in the email column? We have to map those fields. That's what that's called. So let's jump in and map those fields. So I'm gonna share my screen. And in this first where it says name, I'm gonna click inside there. And do you see where it says webhook? That was that trigger. That's the step where we collected that information. So I'm gonna click on there to open it up. And the field name is name. I'm gonna map it to first name. Okay. The second item, I have to click outside of there to get to email. So I'm gonna click in email. I'm gonna go back to my first step trigger and click it. And then I'm gonna map it to email. Okay, so now it's set up that the information that I collect in the first name field goes into the name column. The information that I collect in the email field goes into the email column. And now what I'm gonna do is actually click save and send. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna send this test information into the spreadsheet to make sure it's connected correctly. So click that button. 
And now it said that it um, successfully sent. So let's take a look. We'll go into the spreadsheet and there it is. It actually sent the information in. And did you see how, how fast it did it? It's like click, boom, there it goes. So what we've set up so far is we've set up a form to collect a name and an email. The email is sent outside of Builderall. It's connected to Google Spreadsheet and it's sent into the spreadsheet. All right, so anybody have any questions about that? And are you ready to test it to see if it really, really works? <laughs> Tyree's like, I hope it works. <laughs> this is always the proof in the pudding, right? <laughs> uh, actually, Sheila, this is like really mind blowing because it's like having a systematic virtual assistant to do all of this for you. And it's easier to have something like this to be able to communicate with a virtual assistant. So right now, I'm having a, another moment, okay? <laughs> yeah, and Ty honestly, Tyree, let me tell you, the hardest part is just figuring out, can it do that? Can it, can it do what I want it to do? Um, and then you find out it does what you didn't even know it could do. So then you start coming up with other ideas and you're like, wait, I could do this, but can it do that? Um, so it's, it's like a never ending, like goose chase, trying to figure out what can it do and then how can I implement? So it's really, really fun. Um, do you guys have any questions before I show you how we can test it? No? Okay, let's test it and see if it's actually working. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen and we'll go back to the live version. So I'm gonna go back to Cheetah. Uh, back to the actual page. Let me find the page here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, there it is right there. We'll go back. All right, so I'm gonna refresh this page and now we're gonna add um, just another name and another email. So I'm just gonna go here and I'll say Tony and then Tony at builderalldiva.com. So that's the information I'm adding. I'm gonna click get instant access. It's gonna give me that weird success message, but that's okay. That's, that's just telling you, hey, I sent it successfully. So there we go, there's the success message. So now what we should see is inside of here that Tony is added. Do you see how fast that was? Like super duper fast. Pabli does not do anything slow. It does really, really, really fast. So as soon as we hit submit, it actually sent that information. Now there's things that you can do to prevent it from doing that um, success message. So when you go into the uh, contact form and you go into set fields, one of the things you can do is do a redirect after submit. So you can actually say, I want it to go to um, HTTP google.com. So after you submit, what page do you want them to see? And then you can actually do a success message as well. Um, yay, your info has been sent. There we go. And, uh, and then you can click save. And that way you've got at least like a redirect happening so you can redirect them to a different page and they don't see that weird success message on the web hook. So that is method number one, uh, to be able to uh, connect two different platforms and have them communicate. Now, the next thing I wanna do is actually go another step in the same workflow. And I want to add that information into Mailing Boss 4. So what I've done is I've pulled it out, I skipped Mailing Boss, I skipped Builder all together. I, all I did was collect the information and then send it out to Google. But now I, I'm like, you know what? I really wanna send it into Mailing Boss. So let's take a look at how we can send it into Mailing Boss with a tag, okay? Into Mailing Boss with a tag. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And, uh, and let me go to Canva. I think that was the next thing I was supposed to do with you guys. Yep, so we're gonna go from Cheetah into Google and then into Mailing Boss. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. So it hits Mailing Boss 4 or Mailing Boss 5, whichever one you're using. Okay, so let's jump into Pabli and, um, and I'm gonna minimize this one because that one's done. It's already going into the Google spreadsheet. And, uh, and we'll add a step, but the first thing I need to do is actually create uh, a list inside of Mailing Boss. And we're gonna go uh, Mailing Boss 4, and I'll also create one in Mailing Boss 5. So let me go into Builder All, and I'll go into the old Mailing Boss. And we're gonna create a new list here. So uh, Mailing 
bus four. Boom. So all I'm doing is creating a new list. And remember when you create a new list, you guys, you can set up the email sequence to go out. We're not gonna do all of that. We're just gonna make it real easy today. And we're just gonna do the subscriber list. So I created a new list and, uh, and I'll, I'll make it, sing oh, I'll do double opt-in, doesn't make a difference. Um, I'll leave the tags there, they're fine. Um, I'm gonna do the um, email and first name because that's the data that I've collected, okay? And then I'm gonna click, um, save and i now have a new email list in um, mailing boss four okay so we've got mailing boss four a subscriber list set up and i'm going to go into mailing boss five and do the exact same thing i'm just going to do it in mailing boss five so here we go into mailing boss five and mailing boss five works for setting up your subscriber list and setting up your email sequence uh, if you're wanting to do um, some more of the advanced stuff like setting it up through checkout and e-learning and all that kind of stuff, then all those connections are not necessarily there. But through Cheetah and setting up an opt-in form, subscriber list and email sequence, all of that is working. So now I'm going to go to subscribers and lists. Boom. And, uh, and I'm just going to click create a list. That's all I got to do. So I'm going to click list. And we're going to call this mailing boss five. And I'll just name it the same thing in the description. And, and it says, check this option if you want to create an instant message. Nah, I'll click save. And I think it's saved. Let's see. There we go. So it's, it's saved. I now have a new subscriber list inside of 5.0. And uh, the fields are email and first name. So I've got um, two fields, email and first name. And that's basically all I need. So now I've got a mailing boss four form and a mailing boss five form. So everybody got what I've done so far? Let me look at your beautiful faces. Everybody with me so far? Okay, fabuloso. Now we're gonna connect them so that the data that we actually sent into the Google spreadsheet is now going to also be sent into Mailing Boss. And we'll do one for Mailing Boss 4 and one for Mailing Boss 5. So let's do that. So I'm going to share my screen. We'll go back to Pabli. And let me kind of move you guys out of the way here. Very good. All right, so there's where we added it to our Google spreadsheet. Now I'm going to click plus, And we're going to do um, Mailing Boss 4 first. Oh, let me click the plus sign again, see if it'll add for me. Uh, Apparently I didn't click it hard enough. I don't know why. Let me see if it's down here. Save. And plus. And plus. Now I'm probably gonna look at this in a minute and it's gonna have 52 tasks in there. So we're just gonna do like this. And refresh and plus there we go i just had to refresh the screen and then it acted right so the first one is the trigger this is the one that's collecting the data for me the second one is google spreadsheets now i'm going to send it to mailing boss four so in here i can actually rename these um let me see clone step i can't see where to rename it at Oh, I guess I'll name it after it's chosen. But let me look for the Builder All tool. And to do build, Builder All Mailing Boss 4, you can use the Builder All Mailing Boss app. See that cute little thing right there? You just click on it. And now it's actually connecting, starting the connection to Builder All. Okay. And for the action, I can select to add a lead in a list, I can update a lead or I can search a lead by email. Those are the actions that I can do. So think about that a minute. Um, I can do several different things with this, not just send information into Mailing Boss. I can update information or I can search um, by email. Okay, I'm gonna do add a list, add a lead, because that's you know, what I wanna do. And the next thing I have to do is I've said I wanna use Mailing Boss and I said I wanna add a lead, but now I have to connect it to Mailing Boss. Okay, 
So I click connect and I've already connected my Skydiving Diva account, but I, if I wanted to do it brand spanking new for the first time, I'd click add connection and then I would name it. So here I am, uh, Skydiving Diva number two. And then I have to get the integration key. The integration key is inside of Mailing Boss 4.0. That's what we're working in. So let's jump into Mailing Boss 4.0 right there. And it's easy to find. I'm going to click this little um, burger menu and I'm going to go to integration. And in integration, um, I've got the integration key right there. You see that? That's my integration key. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then I'm gonna go back over to Pabli and connect it just like that. So piece of cake. And then I'm gonna go to um, save. And now it's actually connected to my Skydiving Diva account, my mailing boss information. Okay, everybody got that? All right, the next thing I have to do is I have to, um, map out the information. So inside of Mailing Boss, um, it has uh, information that I need to collect. First of all is the email address. That's required. There's no doubt about it. That's required. I have to have that every single time. So it says enter a valid email address of the subscriber. So I click on here. And remember, we captured that in the first event, the trigger. So I'm going to click that and click email. So now every time somebody fills out that form, it's gonna connect the email address in Mailing Boss with the email address that they put in the form. Okay, then I'm gonna click first name and I'm gonna do webhook and I'm gonna do the first name. And then the last name, I don't, I don't, I didn't even collect that data. So I don't have to fill anything out. But then it says, what list are you connecting it to? So if I do the drop down, see if I can find it. Maybe the last one on the list, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Default form, no. I thought it was at the very top. Was it at the very top? I always get confused. Mailing boss four, you're right. I just totally blew through it. So mailing boss four. So what we're basically saying is connect to the Skydiving Diva account, take the email and the first name and put it into this list. Okay. The next thing, and this is this to me is one of the most valuable is I can also add a special tag. So if I want to tag that person, because maybe it's a form that they filled out in a special place, um, maybe I'm using this only for Google ads, then I can tag them as G ads. Or maybe I'm using this form and collecting leads for Tyree. So I can put a tag of Tyree. So I know these are Tyree's leads. So I can tag however I want to tag. So I'm just gonna call this tag one. There we go. And then the status. So how do I want these people to go into this list? Do I want them to go in as confirmed, which means they immediately start to get emails? Or do I want them to go in as unconfirmed or unsubscribed, which means they're not going to start getting emails right away. So I'm going to send them in as confirmed. And even though this is a double opt in, I, I will have to see if they actually go in as a status of confirmed or do they have to check their email first. Okay, then it's got an area for custom fields. We're not going to work with custom fields. We're just going to have these fields that we collected out of the opt in form. Now, the next thing I need to do is actually test it. Can I test this information and send it? So I click save and send a test. What it's gonna do is it's connect, gonna connect to Mailing Boss 4. It's gonna send my test data in. And it says that it sent it in successfully, but I don't believe it. So let's go check. So I'm gonna go into Mailing Boss 4 and we're gonna take a look at if this one has subscribers. So I'm gonna go to my lists. And there's mailing bus four and holy cow, there's this little <laughs> subscriber. So let's click that and see if that's the test information. And it comes in as Builder All Diva, Shelly at Builder All Diva, which is great. 
and then it comes in as unconfirmed. So even though I identified it, you guys, as confirmed, because it's a double opt-in, it won't be confirmed officially until they um, get their email and actually click confirm on their email or um, whatever it says in the email. Also notice that it got the tag. So when I use that Builderall app, I can actually set up a special tag to go in with it as well. Okay, so everybody with me there? Cool. All right, so we've now collected information in contact form, skipped out of Builderall, we're out of Builderall. We sent it to Google Spreadsheet, and now we've sent it back into Mailing Boss 4. So now let's take a look at the same workflow and add another step in there. And this time I wanna add it to Mailing Boss 5, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and share our screen. And we'll go back into Pabbly. And everything works here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save because save is my friend. And I'll collapse it to kind of get it out of the way. Oops, oops I uncollapsed. There we go. So this is Builder All Mailing Boss. I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna rename it um, uh, MB4. So I remember that that is the information that's going into Mailing Boss 4. And now I'm gonna do a new step. So let's take a look at the steps that we've done already. So we've got the webhook that captured the data from the form. We've sent it to Google uh, Spreadsheet, and then we sent it to Mailing Boss 4. Now let's send it to Mailing Boss 5. So I'm gonna click plus, and I've got a new um, action that I can do. And this time I want to grab webhooks again, but this time it's gonna be done a little bit differently. Oh, actually, I think I wanna do API. So API, um, API is a way to connect uh, different things based on some special code. So in the API, it says, what kind of action do you want to do? And that action is a post. That's what we wanna do is we wanna check this data and we wanna post it to this location, okay? Or apply it to this location. Um, so then it says, wait a minute, where do you wanna send it to? Where is it, where is it going? What's the URL of where you would like to send this data? Now, let me, let me tell you something. This is another type of webhook. So in the beginning, we did a webhook that was listening, right? It was listening saying, hmm, is there data coming? And if that data is coming, I want to grab it. Okay, that's called a catch hook. Now we're doing a different type of webhook. It's using APIs, but it's a type of webhook but this webhook is doing it a little bit differently. It's saying, oh, I'm getting information, so I'm gonna post it or apply it to this place, okay? So in one place, we're capturing data. In another place, we're sending data out. Everybody got that? And that's because the first one is a trigger and this one is an action, okay? All right, so let's set up our action. So when we set up this action, it needs a URL. So let's go into Mailing Boss 5.0, and I need to find out the URL of my, uh, my subscriber list. So to do that, I need to go into, um, let's see if I can find it. Might be forms, um, might be embed. Great. So right here, when I go to forms and embed, so I'm in my list, Mailing Boss 5, I go to forms and embed, and there's a magical item right here that's called subscribe from URL, okay? That's the URL we want to send them to. So basically that's saying, send any data you got to this URL and we will put it into this uh, subscriber list, okay? So I'm gonna grab that form or that URL, and I'm gonna copy it. And then I'm gonna jump back in here and I'm going to paste it, just like that, piece of cake. And then um, everything else stays the same. Uh, this is pretty standard that the payload type is JSON, the wrap array is no, authentication is no, you've got the integration key. So that integration key is authentication enough. Um, and then I'm gonna set the parameters. So what that means is I'm going to map the fields. That's one of the most important things that you need to do is map the fields. So I need to look inside of Mailing Boss 5, that subscriber list, and look at my fields. So in here, I've got fields that are named um, email and F name. So the, the tag on them is all capital email and all capital F name. 
Okay, that is a really important thing because if I don't get that exact, it's not gonna work. So right here, it's all capital email, no spaces, all capital F name, no spaces. All right, so I'm gonna transfer that over to the labels. So I'm gonna do F name, and then I'm gonna add one more, and I'm gonna say email, just like that. So now I have the labels that I need, and I need to put the values in there. So we're just gonna go back to that first webhook and connect it. So there's the webhook, and I'm gonna find the first name, and then click outside of that, and then the email. I'm gonna to go to the first webhook and find the email. So now I've actually mapped the fields out so that inside of mailing boss five, the field that says F name, I'm gonna send in the first name from the opt-in form. The field that's called email, I'm gonna send the email information from the opt-in form. Okay, is that making sense you guys? Great. So then the next step is to actually just test it, see if the data goes in. So I'm gonna click save and send. And then it says that it was done and it, it actually sent it as a package deal. So you can see a, a bunch of gobbledygook, but that means that it's sent. So now let's check 5.0 and see if we have a new subscriber. So click in here and new subscriber. And there I am, there's Shelly Turner and I'm unconfirmed, but I'm in there. So that would trigger that email to send out to confirm and do that double opt-in. Okay, so did everybody understand what we've done so far? We did the trigger, which collected the data. We sent it to Google Spreadsheets. And then we've got two more actions. One of them sends them into four and another one sends them into Mill and Boss five. Everybody with me so far? All right, are you ready to test it? People are like, no, don't test it. <laughs> no, no, you're lagging a little bit. Uh, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, the first one is, I'm not familiar with it. I apologize to bring it up, but what is a webhook? A webhook is just a way to either capture information coming in or to ship out information going out. But that to an opt-in form, right? Yeah, it's, it's a, a webhook is a way to listen for data. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? I, I, Does that, hearing, that help, Jackie? I, I remember hearing it before, but I ignored it because it, it wasn't relevant to me. But you mentioned it quite a bit, and I figure mm -hmm. I have to figure out what you're saying. So, so let's think of it this way, Jackie, because I want you to completely understand this. Because if you understand webhooks, the world starts to open up a lot. So, what what I did was I set up a webhook inside of Pabli, and when I did, it gave me a URL to put into my contact form. Mm -hmm. So what that means is Pabli is looking at that URL every moment of every day. It's listening and it's saying, is there any new data? Is there any new data? Is there any new data at that URL? And as soon as someone fills out that contact form inside of Cheetah and they hit submit, it sends to that URL and Pabli's like, oh my God, we got data. Okay. So that's what the webhook is. It's listening for that data. Okay. All right, I get it now. It just it, 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 it confused me I, 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 as you mentioned it a couple of times. The second question is, is you have to create it in uh, mail and box four and bring it over to mail and five or I thought everything was going to be coming to mail and five. Mail and box if, five. I'm showing you both ways so that if you want to use four, you can. Oh, okay. Or if okay. you want to use five, you can. Or if you oh just God. want to use both, which I have no idea why you would do that, but you can, you absolutely can. Now, are you recording it by any chance? I, I am. <laughs> you know, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm asking, it's, it's so white that I hit, couldn't pick up everything. I would love to have a copy because this will take me about three days to go through if you don't <laughs> mind. I don't mind even a little bit. Um, my goal is to get you guys learning how to pull this information out and do all these magical things. So um, absolutely, it will be available to you after we're done. Okay. I, I appreciate it. It just, uh, 
the whiteness, it kills my eyes. I, okay. Trying to figure out where your mouse is. I understand the concept of the, techno, the technical part. I'm very technical. It, it, when you're saying do this, I'm looking, where's the mouse? Where's the mouse? <laughs> and then it, 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 it's horrible. I it's a little tricky. I agree. I agree. And um, I'm not telling you. I'm just saying I need, I need uh, a recording if I can just, to, just for personal use. And, that, and that's awesome. It. Well, today, Jackie, is your lucky day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't use the odds, but I need to. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, any other questions before we go ahead and test it? No? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the link inside of uh, this chat so you guys can actually test it too. And you can use a fake email if you want to. Please don't use any ugly words, but be nice because I'm going to actually put this on video, but I'm going to drop the link in here so that you guys can test it. Um, that's kind of the fun in it, isn't it? So let me find the, um, the actual address of where we need to go. So here we go. And I'm going to drop it inside of chat. So you guys be watching for it inside of chat. And boom, now you guys should be able to fill out that form with a name and an email. And what should happen is I should see it show up in the Google form, or sorry, Google spreadsheet. But then I should also get it inside of Mailing Boss 4 and also Mailing Boss 5. So I'm going to give you guys a second to do that. And I will actually fill it out myself as well. So let me share my screen so you can see me doing it. So here we go. So here's the form. I'm going to refresh just to get the, the latest version. And so I'm going to go uh, Batman because I really like Batman. Batman at GothamCity.com. And then I'm going to click Get Instant Access. And so I got my success message. And so now what should happen is I should see uh, the Google spreadsheet get a new line. And ooh, looky there. And then I also should see all of these people inside of uh, Mailing Boss 4 and Mailing Boss 5. So let's check it out. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. There's Batman right there. Six, seven, eight, nine people. So let's check Mailing Boss and make sure that those are going in there. So here's Mailing Boss five. So I'm gonna click refresh. Let's see if you guys got into the list. Um, there we go, Mailing Boss five. And oops, subscribers. Nope, 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 close. Subscribers, there we go. Mm, come on, load the subscribers, you got this. Boom. There we go, oh, look at all those people. So you see how Mailing Boss 5, that list that we just created, everybody that um, filled out that information, you guys, you all went into the Mailing Boss 5 list. So just be ready, I'm gonna spam you guys, okay? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then we'll take a look at Mailing Boss 4. And we'll refresh the screen and boom, there's everybody again in Mailing Boss 4. So are you seeing how this can work to either add them to 4 or 5? Remember 4 uses the special app for Mailing Boss and then 5, we have to do it manually if you wanna do 5, but manually still isn't really that hard, okay? Any questions about what we've done so far? Linda. Um, so Shelly, your mailing boss four went directly into my inbox, but mm -hmm. your mailing boss five went into my spam. Uh, I, I have no email connected to that one. So I don't know which, I don't so know why I assume that. Is it your domain is warmed up with four and not with five? Is there probably, to... probably, I haven't really, I haven't really set up a default with what was the email that it sent from? Uh, Shelly Turner, Team Awesome. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that one's not a warmed up one. If you got it at, at Shelly at builderalldiva.com, that would be a different one. And the first one came from, just says Shelly Turner. There should be an email on there. Um, Builder All Team Awesome. Ah, that's weird that it went in one and, and yeah. weird, weird, weird. Um, but yeah, no worries about that because that's not really um, affected by Pavly at all. That's a domain issue for sure. 
but uh, everybody comfortable with what you've learned so far? Because I'm going to blow your mind a little bit now, if you're ready. You ready? No, okay. <laughs> so, Shit, I just want to say mine went into spam too. I checked and it went into spam. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, a email address that I don't really use. That's probably why it's going to spam. Okay, I'm just saying because you said you was gonna spam us, so I'm gonna let you know. Yeah, and, and I I was true to my word, wasn't I? That's true, true, true. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at some other things that we can do inside of Pavly that is really really exciting. So um, I'm gonna share my screen, and remember that we um, did a trigger with webhook. So when I go into this Pavly and take a look at everything that I've done. I'm gonna go ahead and save everything to make sure it's saved because save is your friend. And it's thinking really hard. It's like, yeah, you asked me to do something and I don't wanna do it. Um, I'll refresh. Here we go. So these are all the steps that we set up. And if you remember the first one that we did, the trigger was a web hook. Webhooks are very valuable. And honestly, most of my Zapier and Pabli stuff starts with webhooks. And one of the things that you can do is you can actually trigger on webhooks in different areas of Builderall. So let's take a look at um, an item that is for sale. So if I go into Builderall and I go to my uh, Cheetah website builder, and let's take a look at let me see if I can find a product that's for sale that I have. I don't know. Find a fast product, maybe. Dun, 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 dun. Let's do, we'll just make it from scratch. That's probably gonna be the easier way. So I'm gonna go back to my first page and I'm gonna go to my Cheetah website. We're gonna edit. We're just gonna create a fast product. So I'm gonna go into Super Checkout and I'm gonna create a product. So my business name is uh, Builder Raw Diva and the name we'll put Tony Turner, Tony at builderawdiva.com, phone number, yay. Um, country is United States. Dun, 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 right there, postal code, that works for me and start. So now we've got um, the super checkout set up here and I'm just gonna create a product. And when I create a product, I'm just gonna do create new product and we'll just go through the product creation process. So we'll say this is Shelly's new product. Language is English. Let's find an image we can use. Um, I think we should try to sell, what should we try to sell? Find a good one to sell here. Man, I got. Let's try to sell um, Chris and Cindy. That they're worth something, right? <laughs> so we are actually selling Chris and Cindy. They're so awesome. Um, I think I can get a couple million dollars for them. So um, this product is Chris and Cindy. Fabulous. And and we'll say it's a digital product ebook. That sounds good. I'll save and continue. Um, we'll use Stripe test. That's a great way to test this. We're gonna do it in US dollars. So US dollars, no refunds, single payment, um, no coupons, um, no, no coupons. And the value, we're gonna say they're $1 million, one zero 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 point zero zero. So they're worth $1 million. Um, and then we're saving continue. And no product quantification because there's only one of them no affiliation, um, it's thinking really hard, you guys. Save and continue. I'm gonna refresh again because this poor thing is working too hard. So, and it didn't take it. So we'll try it again. Uh, Shelly's, awesome product. And Chris, Cindy. And we'll find their picture again. So here we go. Here we are. That's them. And we'll make it work just like that. Fabulous. Oh, it's that's why it's pitching a fit on their picture. So we'll try a different picture. Why don't we sell YouTube? 
See if that one works. Oh, no. Well, we're just going to try that. So YouTube, we are selling YouTube. It's digital. It's an ebook. Save and continue. Stripe test. U.S. dollars. There we go. And no refund, single payment, no extra taxes. Um, and we'll say it's $1,000. That's probably why it pitched a fit because we had it too much. I don't think we're allowed to sell anything for a million dollars. Um, and then everything should be fine. So I'm going to click save and continue. Contact product quantification. No, save and continue. Now we'll let the affiliation load. Maybe. There we go. No affiliation, so save and continue. Design, I'm just gonna go with the three-step checkout. That's the easiest one to use. Um, and what kind of thank you page do we wanna do? I'm just gonna send it back to the home page so we don't have to create a bunch of pages. The place where we're selling it is on the home page, and then save and continue. Um, no email campaign, no restricted areas, no, no integrations yet, but I want you to notice here, we have enable webhook. Do you see that? Enable webhook, All right? So before I continue to go on, Jackie, what does that mean? If I click enable webhook, what does that mean? You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, that means you're, you're collecting data uh, to, to so you, you can put it in your info. There you go. You got it exactly right. So that webhook, when I check mark it, that means start listening because I'm going to send some data to whatever URL I put in that box, right? I never I never try to it'd be something that that little that can mean a lot that's all you're exactly right you're exactly right it is deceivingly little um but it's very very powerful uh, and i want you to think in terms of now we're working in super checkout so yeah. when we put that url in there that we get from pavli what we're doing is we're saying pull the checkout information so okay. what i just sold we're going to pull that data out and then send it wherever we want to does that make sense it does. It does. I, I, I had work in a, in a government and they were doing a directory for businesses mm -hmm. and they wanted to know how to manipulate the information to a hierarchy set up. Mm -hmm. So I had to break them all up. Ah, so you've had a little bit of experience, especially with kind of mapping things. So you got this. Yeah, I All do right. that. I do that to a database and a, an accounting program because I'm trained awesome. to do accounting program in a corporation. Mm -hmm. And like every, give you an example, like go from the CEO to the middle management that would set up a different report for all of them. So I had to rewrite everything in there. And I Take me about three months to do it. Uh, yeah, you can do it. You can do it way faster here. So. <laughs> no, no, but I, give me an idea. <laughs> so anyway, right here, we're going to come back to this because we don't have the URL yet. But if I click enable, it's going to ask you for a URL. That's what it's going to ask you for. But I can't enable it yet because I don't have the URL. I'm still setting up the product. So we're going to skip that for now. I'm going to click save and continue. I'm not going to do any shipping. And as far as terms of use, I'm not selling any body parts or babies or illegal drugs. So I'm going to accept the terms and I'm going to click save and continue. So now we've got our product set up, you guys. And the next thing I need to do is actually get a URL from Pabli from a webhook. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to go in here to Pabli and we're going to just go back to the dashboard and we're just going to do a brand spanking new a workflow having to do with the super checkout. So I'm going to click create workflow and I'm going to say test super checkout and then click create. And the first thing it's going to do is load it up and say, okay, what's your trigger? Okay, what is your trigger? What do I need to do to start 
collecting data from the first platform. So again, I'm gonna do webhook, same thing I did before. And it gives me a different URL. If I look at these URLs compared to the first uh, workflow that I did, the URLs will be different. It generates a new URL for every single webhook. It has to, um, because it's going to be collecting different data. So here's that URL right here. I'm gonna copy that. And now I'm gonna take that and put it back into Super Checkout, into my product. So there's my product. I'm gonna edit. And I'm gonna scroll down to integrations. And then I'm gonna go ahead and enable webhook. And I'm going to paste that URL in there. And then what I'm gonna do, you guys, is I'm gonna send a test payload. And what that's gonna do is send some test data into my account on Pabbly. So I'm gonna click test payload. And now it's gonna to send to that URL and I can actually um, go here and look at Pabbly. It already caught it, <laughs> caught it that fast. So this is the data that it's gonna be sending. And it's a lot of data. This is your payment information, the person's name, the person's email, how much money total they spent, um, what were the options? So for this one, it says that um, it's a Stripe gateway and a credit card. Um, it tells you what the thank you URL is. Um, all that kind of stuff is all captured here, you guys. And then here's the buyer email and the buyer first name. And then if I scroll up, it's got even more information. So uh, let's see, it has uh, the product name right here. And it says, uh, is it uh, digital or um, physical? So it tells you that information. Um, it tells you what currency you were using, the dollar amount, um, and the price of the, the product itself. So you can see that it's got a lot of information here that you can actually pull out that would be valuable information, right? If you check mark that you have to accept an address, it would get the address information as well. So it's sending you the information that it has and sending it into Pabbly, okay? Everybody with me so far? Yes? Okay, great. Now we're gonna go ahead and just send that to a Google spreadsheet. How's that sound? Is that good? All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. And now that I've collected the data, I'm gonna go ahead and um, collapse this because we wanna make sure it's out of the way. Also notice that this is a free task. It doesn't cost me in tasks um, to collect this data. It doesn't count against me in tasks at all. So the next step I'm just gonna grab is Google Spreadsheets. So I'm gonna go Google Sheet. And then it's gonna say, okay, what do you wanna do? And in here, I can say, um, add a new row. And that's probably most of the time, that's what I'll do with the spreadsheet is add a new row. And, and then I need to connect, but I need to find, uh, I need to create the spreadsheet of what I want to do. So I'm gonna go back in here to Google and I'm gonna go back in here to my homepage for sheets and I'm gonna create a new sheet. And here is where I'm gonna put the information. So I'm gonna put the name, the, oh, sorry, it's not my name, name, email, and then product name and then a uh, total. So that's the four things I wanna capture, let's say uh, out of this particular information. So I've got name, email, product name, and the total that they spent for that product, okay? So now I've got it created. Let me go ahead and come up with a name. So test, um, check out, super check out to Google thread sheet. Can't even spell, you guys. I'm so excited about Pabbly. All right, so now all that information is in there. It's all updated, it's ready to go. So I'll go back to Pabbly and I'm gonna click connect. Now it's in my Builder All Diva account. So I'm gonna choose an existing uh, connection and I'm gonna go Builder All Diva one and then uh, save. And what it's doing is it's connecting to that account and it's looking up all of my, uh, all of my sheets that I have. And because it was the last sheet I created, it's actually the top of the list. So I will purposely choose that one. And then it's only got one sheet in it. Cause remember when you new, create a new uh, worksheet, it only creates one sheet in there. So I will purposely choose that sheet. 
And now it went in there, you guys, and it looked for the column names. Remember when it connects, it looks for what column names do you have? So the column names in my sheet are name, email, product name, and total. Let's make sure that's right. Name, email, product name, and total. That's the information I want sent to this sheet. So I'll go back to Pabli and I'll start mapping that information based on what we collected in the first step, the trigger, okay? So for name, I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna choose webhook and I'm gonna see if I can find the name in here. So I'm gonna scroll down and sometimes you have to scroll a little bit and there's the buyer name right there. So I'm gonna click that. And now whatever the buyer's name is when they uh, make the purchase, it's gonna put that buyer's name in this field. The next one is email. So I'm gonna find it inside the webhook information. And I'm going to scroll down and see if I can find buyer email, which is right there. I'm going to click that. And now that information is collected. Now the product name, I'm going to click on that and find it in webhook. So I'm going to scroll down and see if I can find the product name. So let's see, payment options. Dun, dun, dun. I think that um, a sellable, there it is right there, sellable name, product name. We'll click that. And then the total, What? how much money did they spend total? So I'm gonna click on that, go to webhooks. Let me see if I can find a total here. So total right there. So I'm gonna click that. And so now I have all of my fields mapped so that whatever information is in that checkout, it's gonna come out and get sent into Google Docs, okay? So now I'm gonna click uh, send to be able to send some test data into there. And it says it was successful. So boom, there it is. There's the information exactly like it's supposed to appear. And, uh, and then if I go back, it's actually ready to go. This one's actually ready. So I'm gonna click save and okay. And we're actually ready to start uh, collecting sales and sending that information into a Google spreadsheet. So now let's test it out. Let's see if it really works. So I'm gonna to go to um, my super checkout right there. And I've enabled the webhook and everything's ready to go. And um, we will update to make sure that everything is saved. Let me kind of move you guys out of the way here. Perfect. And now in this product area, I'm gonna to go to links and I'm gonna to go to the sales page specifically for that product. So I can test out that product. So normally you would bake a sales page and then you take this URL right here and put it on a button. I'm too lazy to do that. So we're just gonna do it like straight out of the box. So I'm just gonna copy this and then I'm gonna open a new window and paste. And now I'm actually pulling up the checkout pages for that product. That way I can skip having to create the website. I can just test it right out of the box, okay? Everybody with me so far? All right, so let's continue. I'm gonna click continue. And then I'm gonna fill out the information. So there's Shelly Turner, Shelly Turner 4, sounds great. Um, $1,000, that sound great. And then I've got the test information in here for Stripe. So it's already set up for uh, the visa. That's 424242424242242, right? That information. If I wanted to click, I could um, pay with a different card. And there's the information right here. So if you're doing Stripe test, this will default for you. So you can just use the test information and not have to whip out your credit card and actually buy it for real, okay? So I'm using all the test information. And right here is the data that I have to put in. It tells me the card. So I'm just gonna go to 4242, 4242, 4242, 4242. And then the expiration date can be any date in the future. So I'll say 0826, that's in the future. CVC can be anything, so I'll put 333. And then zip, I'll just use mine because I can. So now I've got everything uh, input into this information so I can test this without using a real card, okay? I could also set this to save for future payments. So if you use this to, to test a lot, you guys, check mark this and that way you don't have to keep entering the credit card always. It will automatically be in there and you can test things a little bit faster, okay? 
So I'm going to click pay. Oops, I need to put a phone number in there. Here we go. And pay. And now it's going through Stripe test. I'm not really being charged for it. It's just a test environment. And, uh, and it says purchase complete and then thank you. So I'm going to click continue. And boom, it's taking me back to the home page because I didn't set a different thank you page. Okay, that's all that's happened is I didn't uh, set a thank you page. So now let's first see if the information went into um, uh, the Google spreadsheet. And oh, there it is. So there's Shelly Turner, Skydiving Diva, Shelly's awesome product. And it has a thousand, it didn't put the, um, the uh, decimal points in there. So we may have to work with that to get the right decimal points. But you see that it's collecting the data and it's sending it into a Google spreadsheet. Now, what are some things, why is this valuable? What are some things that you can do with this? Well, one of the things that I do, you guys, which is very critical for me, is I do this exact thing. I pull it out using webhooks. So I pull it out of Builderall first, and then I take that data and I do a tag on the product that they bought. So right now you can't tag with the product inside of Builderall. It doesn't let you tag with the product information. So this way I can pull it out and I can tag them with the product that they bought and then send it into Mellyboss, whether I'm sending it into Builderall 4 or Builderall 5. Doesn't matter. I can actually send it in and tag them. Okay. So the tags to me are critical because now I can tag according to the product that they bought. So why, why would that be important? Why would I wanna tag someone that they bought the blue slippers? Why would I wanna tag them? Can you guys think of any reason why? Chip? You, you can do, you can sell it or you can use it for like a survey or research. When you do a presentation, you have the information there. Or, you can find out which product is the successful one or not. Yep, I can keep track of who's buying what. Here's another thing. Um, let's say that I've got these really cool um, things that I'm selling, like maybe uh, Bluetooth uh, headphones, right? Earbuds. Well, what I can do is I can tag them. And when they hit Mailing Boss, that can trigger a special email to give them instructions on how to use those Bluetooth earbuds, right? And because they're tagged, only that person with that tag will get that email, even though they can like, be in a list with everybody else. It's like the business directory I was talking about, and there's certain places like restaurants, so you can sell it to the restaurant, or a grocery store for that matter. But yeah, so you, you're oh. starting to see the power of pulling it out first oh, and then yes. sending it in to be able to tag specifically with the product. And this is exactly what I do, you guys. I actually have it set up. I have a system set up so that um, it pulls out the product and then based on what they bought, sets them up for their uh, account for the software that I have and then sends out a specific email to give them instructions on how to access that software, including giving them their name and their, their uh, password. So, um, it's, and it's all automated. So once they buy it, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to follow up and go, okay, I'm sending you your email and password. So you have it. It's all automated using Zapier, but I'm pulling it over to Pabli now. Right? Does that make sense? Um, Tyree, I think you had a question and then I'll get Linda. Well, I was just going to say that's another thing, another way to track and see what a person has in case you want to send them another offer, you know, things that they like. The other thing I was thinking about when I was laughing about is usually on a Friday when we're on an investor meeting and Chris is in the chat, he's cutting up. So I was wondering what he would be saying if you had mentioned about selling him. I can't even imagine what he would be saying and what, he, what kind of agreement. So that's what I was laughing about. Chris is like, yes. Well, I'm laughing too because it wouldn't let me sell him for a million dollars. Well, I'll get to give you an example. I had an insurance guy when I was doing database management. And he said, anytime you they do a survey on insurance, I sell him the, the information, he pay me for it. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't, he, he told, specifically said, don't give it to anybody else. Mm -hmm. So there you I'm go. Good. There you go. That you, you're, you're coming up with some world world use of some of this information. So I'm so, so excited for you. And I can hear the, um, the wheels turning in your guys' head for sure. 
Um, Linda, go ahead. So I guess I'm a little surprised to hear that you have to go outside of our tools to do the tagging. It, are there plans to? Yes, there are plan, plans to add that, like to super checkout to add the tagging capability, but it's not there yet. So this is a workaround until they get it in there. Okay, thank it's, you. It's actually a really good workaround. Um, we saw in the Mailing Boss app that's connected to four, that it's got that tag capability. I'm gonna show you how to manually tag if you're gonna send it to Mailing Boss five, okay? So I'm gonna go back into that original workflow that they that we worked in. So I'm going to uh, save everything here because it, you know you wanna save, save as your friend. It's your very good friend. And then I'm gonna go into um, the dashboard and we're gonna go into that first, that first one right here, that test with Cheetah to the Google spreadsheet. And I'm gonna go into Mailing Boss 5, which was the API. And if I do that, I can actually um, add another field here, which is uh, really important. Let me see if I can find where to add it at. Dun, 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 dun. Set parameters. Oh, right here. So here, here is the new field right here. And to set up a tag, to make it tag in what you want it to say, you have to call it tag internals. So write that down. This is really, really important. It has to be exactly this, tag internals, T-A-G-I-N-T-E-R-N-A-L-S, okay, tag internals. And then this is where you put the tag at. So I can say uh, tag two, uh, let me put it all in capitals, tag two. So what I've done is these other fields the data was in the webhook that we captured at the very beginning. But this value is gonna be the same for everybody. If they go through this workflow, they all get the same tag. So I can just type it in and it will be the same tag for everybody. Does that make sense? So this one, I don't have to search for, I just have to type it in. Everybody got that? So that is tag internals and I've put the value as tag two. So now anybody that comes through this funnel, if they go into mailing boss four, they're gonna get tag one. If they go into mailing boss five, they're gonna get tag two. Okay, now I will save. And I'll stop sharing and make sure that everybody got that. Everybody understand? Chip, go ahead. Could tag two have just as easily been called orange shirt? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Great. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> it's completely based on the product. You can even you can even do a, a poll and say, I want to pull the webhook information and I want the tag to be the exact product name. But if you do that, it's going to be loud and messy for sure. Because you'll have product names that'll be really long. Yeah, dealing okay. with database, I, 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 I see what you're saying. I, okay. I see it right out. Yep, yep. So let's test it to see if that works. So let's go through that first uh, opt-in form and let's see if we get a tag for four and also a different tag for five. Okay, y'all ready for that? Let's do it. All right, so I'm going to go back to somewhere. <laughs> let's see if I can find it. I've got only 50 pages open. There it is. I'm going to go backwards. I'm not sure why it's still doing the success thing, uh, Linda. I saw that too. So um, I'll do a little bit more research on that one, okay? Um, so let's add a person in there. So let's say Heather and Heather at builderalldiva.com. You're not sharing? So, oh, sorry. Um, uh, you guys are supposed to be psychic. You guys not psychic? Nobody's psychic here. All right, so I've got Heather and then Heather at builderalldiva.com. And then I'm going to click get instant access. So it's been successfully sent. That's good. So now let's go ahead and check uh, mailing boss four. And we'll do a refresh and let's see if Heather got in there. So let's see. Not yet. There's Heather right there. 
and there's tag one. Okay, so we know she went through all the steps and she got tag one. So now let's look at mailing boss five and we'll refresh this one. And it didn't want to refresh. It's very, very particular. So let me go to mailing boss five here and subscribers. And there's Heather right there. There's Heather. So let's see if we can look at her information. So we'll do an overview. And there she got tag two. Okay, so that was that tag internals that we created. That is a manual way to create a tag for your mailing boss. Okay, everybody got that? So now you know that we can do a webhook and capture stuff from a contact form. You can do a webhook and capture stuff from super checkout. You can pull that data, take a look at it and then uh, move it into a Google spreadsheet. You can move it into Mailing Boss 4 or Mailing Boss 5, or you can even connect to other programs. And I'm gonna show you real quick how, how I do that. So um, I'm gonna jump into, um, let's say a white labelify. So white label I think that's right. I didn't spell it right. But this is a product that I have that um, I can actually sell courses and, uh, and give them access to these courses. So let's take a look at how I would do that. So in here, I've got, um, let's see, products. And I'll look at this first one. It is done for you bonus page. So it's a product that I can sell and then automatically give them access to. So I'm just gonna manage my white label version of it because that's what I have is a white label version of it. And then um, on the, let's see, the sales page statistics. Thank you, sales page, customer log room. I'm trying to remember where the APIs are, you guys. It's a challenge sometimes to remember. API integration, so here we go. So under customers, under API integration, remember we had an API that we set up already. Right, that was one of the steps that we did already. So I'll click API. And when I set up that API, it asks for a URL. There's the URL right there. And then it's a post. And remember we talked about the fact that the other API we set up was a post. So we're doing the exact same thing. We are sending whatever data we collect to this URL. It's a post, meaning it's gonna take the data and put it in there. And then the required parameters, so these are the important tags. If you don't have them named right, it's not going to work. And so we've got N-A-M-E, all lowercase, and email, E-M-A-I-L, all lowercase. So when you set up that API, um, all you have to do is have the name and the email and send it to this URL, and it will create an account for that person. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So let's, let's do that. Let's make that happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new API. So the first API is going into mailing boss five. We're just gonna do a new API. And it may be delayed because my computer is freaking out. So we'll just do a refresh and plus, there we go. So now we're just gonna do another API. It's that simple, you guys. I'm gonna grab the API and the action event it's supposed to be a post. That's the important thing. Everything else can stay the same. And I wanna make sure to put that URL in there. So I'm gonna go back to white labelify. I'm gonna click on here and copy it. And then I'm gonna go back to Pabli and paste, just like that. And then I have parameters that I have to set. Those are the labels and fields that I'm gonna map. So I've got two of them. One of them is name, all lowercase, and the other one is email, all lowercase, right? That's what it was showing inside of there. So the required parameter name, all lowercase, no spaces, and the required parameter email, all lowercase, no spaces. This has to be exact or it's not gonna work. It absolutely will not work, okay? So then we'll go into Pavli again and, uh, and we will map out the data. So based on what I've captured in that first webhook, I'm gonna click on that. 
and I'm gonna find the name field, and then I'm gonna click webhook, and I'm gonna find the email field. And now what this is gonna do, you guys, is it's gonna create a new user inside of this particular program. And not only that, it's gonna email them their information so that they can log in. So I'm gonna click save and then okay. I'm gonna click save and okay again, just because it didn't look like it saved. And now what should happen is when I do that same exact form that we've been using this whole time. So I've got the webhook that captures the information, send it to Google spreadsheet, add it to mailing bus four, add it to mailing bus five, and then add it to um, my course so that they can get access to that course. So let's test it. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to go find the page wherever it may be. And we'll refresh. It's still doing the success. Not sure why, but we're going to just roll with it. So I'm going to type in, um, let's say, a Scrappy. Scrappy 1966. And the email scrappy1966 at builderallviva.com. Okay, so now we have a new person that's signing up. Let's get instant access. And we should see it show up in um, our other Google spreadsheet. We're not in the right spreadsheet. We should see it show up in Mailing Boss. So let's go take a look. I'm gonna refresh this page. And it doesn't want to refresh. So there we go. We'll go into here and subscribers. Let's see if we got Scrappy. So there's Scrappy. So he's been added to Mailing Boss 5. And we'll see if he's added to Mailing Boss 6, or sorry, Mailing Boss 4, right there with the right tag. So that's good. So now let's check uh, my program here and see if we got a new customer added in. So I'm gonna to go to customers and customer list and they're scrappy right there. So what happens is this is set up automatically that when they sign up here, um, it automatically sends out an email to let them know, hey, you have a new account. Here's your username and password to be able to get access. So it's all set up and, and I can uh, get them ready to go. Now think about this a minute. I could have also done that through the checkout, right? I could have sold access to that course and then set that webhook into the super checkout and actually taken it out of super checkout. And once they bought the item, it would set up their account for them, right? So I didn't have to do it by contact form. I could do it by super checkout as well. Does that make sense? I think I might have lost a few of you. <laughs> a few of you are going, I don't know, Shelly. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's what you can do. The power of this is imagine you've got it set up with Super Checkout. You've got these things that have API integrations like this program. And now you can actually set it up so that they purchase. It goes through the workflow, sets up their accounts, emails them how to access that account. And all you do is you see that you sold uh, an account. You don't have to set up their access or anything like that. Okay. There's a lot of programs, you guys, that have API integrations that are exactly the same way. So that's something you need to be looking for is API integrations. And if you see that, that means you could probably connect it with Pabli and automate some of the setup process. Okay. Now there's another thing that I absolutely don't have time to cover with you because I can see that you guys are tired. Um, and this will take another hour. But um, it's so cool because you can set it up so that um, you can connect uh, a, a sign-up form to a Google Doc that when they fill out the information, it's going to change the information on the Google Doc to personalize it with their information and then save it as a PDF that they can download. So I'm going to show you exactly where to find that information at. So let's just jump into the presentation real quick. And, uh, and I'll show you where that's at. So let me go back to Canva, if I can find Canva. So we went through um, all of these setups and, um, and we've talked about some other triggers like the Google My Business and the Zoom trigger. And now if you wanna know more, there's so much more to learn with Pabli. So you can check out their YouTube channel. They've got a, 
a chat so that when you're inside of Tably, you can actually click the chat and there's somebody that can chat with you. And they've also got a Facebook group. So let's check all that out so you guys can see where it's at. So I'm gonna go to Tably.com. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I guess I could use the end button, there we go. Um, you can see right here, there's the Facebook group, there's the YouTube channel, and then down here in the bottom corner, there's the live chat. So all of that is available to you just by going to pably.com. And then if I click on the YouTube link, that takes me to their channel. Subscribe to that channel <laughs> and start watching what you can do um, because it is stunning what you can do with Pably. And let me see if I can find the exact video you need for setting up PDFs. So if I go into videos and take a look at what they've got, um, there's what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up. Um, let's see, sales brochure. They have all kinds of certificates you can do. Um, it is absolutely stunning. Uh, let's see, PDF, that's close. So PDF, let me search their thing and see if I can find a PDF. So PDF. All right, Google Forms to PDF document and send PDF on email to the form submitter. I believe that is exactly the one that you need to watch. So it takes them from a Google form where you fill out a form on Google. That would be the trigger. Once they fill out that form, it actually sets it up um, to be able to go to a Google doc, put their information into the Google doc, save that Google doc as a PDF, and then send the PDF to them so they can download it. So that is seriously the video. It is stunning. It's really long. It's really complicated. I wish I could go through it today, but I don't want your heads to explode for sure. And uh, it is fabulous what you can do. So that is the video you want to watch if you want to do something like that. So I want you to think creatively for a minute. Why would you want to send information to a Google Doc to personalize it and then change it to a PDF? What would be the value in that? Um, the best way I can explain it is I'm setting up a site that need to be verified, make sure they see it is right, and to put it in the PDF form is the best way to do it. That's, that's one thing. Another thing is, let's say that um, I've got a course and I want to personalize their certificate with their information and maybe their business information or something like that. So I can create their certificate in a Google Doc, have them fill out that form. When they fill out that form, it'll put their name, their business name and whatever other information I wanna put on that certificate and then save it as a PDF that they can download. So it personalizes that certificate based on what information they want in it. As a certificate, as a certificate, you mean like a signature or something? Yeah, like when you uh, pass a course, you get the certificate for the course. All right, yeah, okay. Uh, another, thing, another thing you can do, we're all looking for lead magnets that we can use. Um, you can actually um, create standard lead magnets, that little eBooks, and then say, I've got a collection of 10 eBooks. If you fill out this form, you, you buy the eBooks, fill out this form, and I will personalize every one of them as if you wrote them. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Right, another business idea. It's another business idea. You could actually set it up so that all of these documents it goes in and personalizes every one of them. They're just Google Docs, but it puts their personal information in there and then saves them as PDFs so they can download them. And it looks as if this person wrote it and they just bought the collection from you and then you automated it with the with Pabli, right? So there's so much potential, you guys. Um, truly, truly so much potential. Um, I would say that if you are remotely interested in Pavli, you want to continue to investigate and see what it can do. And then I'm sure at somewhere down the road, I will probably do some advanced, some more advanced training. You guys got hit pretty hard with it today, um, but you did like super duper well. Y'all stuck with me the whole time. Um, also, I want to open it up for questions now. And then also, if you have not gotten Pavli yet, you can actually go to shellyturner.com slash Pabli and Pabli has an offer right now for a lifetime deal. Now, every day it says that this is the last day. 
So I was like hitting it hard. I'm like, you guys go buy it. Oh my gosh, it's the last day for the lifetime deal. I have no idea when it's going to officially end. That was like last week, right? So um, all I can say is it, it is a lifetime deal. It is absolutely fabulous. The low end is $147 lifetime. The high end is $447 lifetime. That means you won't pay Pavley ever again for that program. And the 447 is the one that I bought that gives you uh, 10,000 tasks per month, which is, that's a lot of tasks. And in Zapier, that's what I had before, but there were no free tasks. <laughs> in Pavly, the triggers and the native apps are free. Only the tasks that are not a trigger or native are the ones that cost me a task, um, a task item. So it'll be a lot less tasks that I have to cover. So that 10,000 tasks will go a lot further than what I have in Zapier. So if you are interested, you can go to shellyturner.com slash Pabli and purchase from there. That is an affiliate link. I don't wanna make no bones about it. If you buy from that, I will make some money. So um, I just don't want you to think that I'm not being transparent. Absolutely, I will be making money if you buy from that link. Do you guys have any questions for me? Um, Linda, go ahead. So, when we create the listening trigger, it doesn't cost us anything. Right. But when it takes, when we create the action, that's when we get charged. Correct. But there are some actions that are not going to be charged because they're native to Pabli. Okay. So like an API, I don't think that, I don't think that one was a charge because I think it was native to Pabli. So hold on a second. Let me jump in there and I'll show you what I mean. Okay. But is, is this regardless of how many subscribers or whatever it is, it actually moves, whether it's one or, you know, 10,000, is it all just created as one? It's, it's one at a time. So if you sign up, that's a task. If I sign up, it's another task. Okay. Right. So each time a person flows through the workflow, that's a task. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at what we created today just to make sure. So right here, we've got the web hook. That's a trigger. So it's free. And then the API, when I open that up, it doesn't say free. So actually that one's not going to be free for me. Okay. Um, the action on uh, the uh, mailing boss, it's not free. It's not a native uh, item. So then the API for mailing boss five, it's not native. So I'll be paying for that task. And then the API to connect them to the, um, the software to set up their account, that one's not free. So everything that's free will actually stay free in the top right-hand corner of the task. So for this um, workflow, the first item's free, but for every time somebody passes through, I've got a task here, a task here, a task here, and a task here. So it's gonna cost me four tasks. Does that make sense? So if I take a look at what's happening, let me look at my dashboard. Let's take a look at what's happening. So, so right here where it says cheetah to Google spreadsheet, 41 tasks, right? And we just created this, but it's 41 because we had several people go through and there's multiple tasks in there. Does that make sense? Now, most of your workflows that you create, most of them are not gonna be as long as this one was with you know five different tasks in there. Um, mine tend to be longer because I have rules, but um, the reality is that when you first start out, you've just got a couple of different uh, things and the trigger is gonna be a free one. Um, and then, uh, let's see, if I go here, the trigger's the free one, that's the webhook. And then when I send to Google Spreadsheet, that's a task that I pay for or not pay for, but it comes out of my 10,000. Okay, one more question, Shelly. So what happens when you exceed your quota? Um, they'll actually um, allow you to um, upgrade your account to be able to get more than 10,000 tasks. Now, if you guys exceed your quota, call me because I don't exceed my quota on Zapier and I use it a lot. So um, I would be surprised if you guys were stepping into exceeding 10,000, especially right away. Well, I bought in on the entry plan just because I wasn't sure how I was going to use this. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, okay. I did I the same thing. I came in on the entry plan. And uh, so I paid $147 to see it. And it didn't take me long 
I jumped into the 447. So I paid twice for lifetime, but um, I paid for the 447 because I knew I needed 10,000 tasks because so I knew I was going to be moving things over. They didn't upgrade you? I did. I got, um, I have 10,000. No, no, what I'm I have saying. 13,000 tasks now. Oh, so it combined them. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Let me show you one more thing before I let you go. And that is a uh, routing routing. You can actually use to kind of route uh, the workflow to go different directions. So let's say that I had product one, product two, product three. Okay. I could send them in and through routing, I can say, okay, if they bought product one, go through this workflow. If they bought product two, go through this workflow. If they bought product three, go through this workflow. So that's another advanced thing that you could do. And the reason you would wanna do that is if you wanna send out special instructions for those products, if you wanna sign them up for special product, uh, like with APIs. So I have multiple courses that they can buy. Um, so if they buy course uh, A, then it's gonna set them up for course A. If they buy course B, it's gonna set them up for course B. If, it, if they buy C, it will set them up for course C. If they buy the entire package, it will set them up for all of them. So you can see how I can route things to be able to set things up the way I want to. Another really advanced uh, way to automate things to happen inside your workflows. Okay. All right. Uh, Tyree, do you have a question? Yes. Uh, my question was um, when upgrading the account, I know we got to upgrade the same account, but um, when you upgraded, did you pay the difference or did you just have to pay as if you paid a- Yeah, I paid the whole, I had paid the whole amount. So I could have, when I first came in, I could have bought the Lifetime 447. So I was like, let me take a look at this first. It was worth $147 to check it out. So I paid the 147. Um, and then like two days later, <laughs> I got the 447. I'm like, yep, Shelly's going that direction for sure. Cause it just didn't take me long to do, to run a few tests and figure out this is going to be good. And I've got a lifetime deal. I don't have to pay monthly. I've got the 10,000 tasks, um, way more tasks than I would get with Zapier. So that one I'm really happy about. And, uh, and it's easy to set up real, real easy to set up. And they've got great training videos for some of the advanced stuff. If you're not sure what can it can even do, um, they've got some great training videos. So with, it didn't take long for me, even though I paid double, but it did give me credit. So I think with the 147, is that, do you get 3,000 tasks with that one? Yeah, with, I don't remember. But I, I think, think it was 3,000 tasks. Yeah, what it's doing for me is it's like I, I bought both of them. So it's activated both of them. So I get 13,000 tasks. Yes, I think um, you know, it was 3,000 tasks with the first one, but just as you did and as Linda K did, I got the entry account, but I'm, I see now I'm going to do the Shelly turn away. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think within 30 days, you can cancel, get a refund, and then just apply your 149. You can. It was so worth it for me to just go ahead and purchase it, though. I'm like, they can have another $147 of my money because it's a lifetime account for me. I am so happy, you guys. I am a sucker for a lifetime deal. So if you guys come across any lifetime deals, give me a shout because sucker's right there. I'll probably buy it. Um, if it's any, if it's even a little bit good, I love the lifetime deals. And this well, is such a great deal with uh, Pavley. Well, I tell you what, when you told us about Content Studio, I got it and I must have gotten the last free uh, lifetime account because mm -hmm. quite a few others after that could not get the life, lifetime account. So when right. you told us about this, I immediately went and got what I could get at that moment. Yay. So, um, I do hate the fact that I told you it was going to be over and that it wasn't over, but but I have no idea when the lifetime deal will end because every single day it says this is the last day. So all I can tell you is if you're interested, get it. If you're not sure, but you still want to get in there and test it out, get that 147. If you're very sure, you're like, I know I'm using this thing, get the 447, whichever, whichever one you think that you uh, are going to need for your business. Um, and then I commit to this, that as I continue to build in Pabli, I'll do some even more advanced uh, training in Pabli so you guys can see how to connect things and, uh, and run with them, especially that routing. There's so much power in the routing when you're using it. Okay. All right. Any other questions, you guys? Uh, Jackie, go ahead. 
Yes, I I have to leave to do the cooking, and uh, I just want to say thank you very much for this. And where am I going to see the the recording? I'll probably drop it on the YouTube channel. So um, just be okay. be ready. I'll drop it on uh, Builder All USA, and uh, and we'll get it out there so that everybody can see it. I'll probably drop it inside the knowledge base as well because that would be a good spot for it to be for information. Yes. Okay. I thank you very much. I You're really so do. welcome. You're so welcome. The pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Take care. Have a good day. You too. All right. Any other questions, you guys, before I let you go? Well, okay. Well, I'm going to stop the recording. Thank you so much for being here. This was a treat for me to be able to teach this advanced stuff. This is really cool stuff. And uh, we got probably two or three really, really wide open business ideas from tonight as well. So you guys just review this video, get some ideas, play with Pabli if you're interested, um, really click in there and find out what the triggers are, what the actions are. It is just amazing what you can do. And, uh, and I challenge you to see if you can use Pabli to continue to automate your business and even come up with some new ideas. But I will see you guys all over the internet. And don't forget, with Pabli and Builderall, build something amazing, right? <laughs> Bye, you guys. Have a great one. Thank you, Shannon. Everybody have a good day. Bye-bye.